Hey, what's up? It's HJ with The Confident Girl, and welcome back to week nine of the Colossians Bible study. So we have been doing this for nine weeks, line by line, verse by verse through Colossians, and we've learned so much about just who Christ is, how to live in light of that, how to defend the true Christ against false Christs, um, false teachers. We've learned about putting off sin and putting on righteousness and how to act godly in social situations. We've learned about a godly home life. And this week we are going to be learning about six tips or six ways to live missionally focused every day of your life. If you are a believer, you are gonna get something out of this, okay? I just wanna say real quick before we go that next week is week 10 and we are finishing the book of Colossians and we're gonna be starting a new book. So if you want to be a part of, of voting for and choosing the next book of the Bible that we study, then you need to click the link below and head on over to my Patreon because my Patreons are going to be the ones that are helping me decide what book of the Bible we're going to study next. Um, you also get a lot of other cool things like merch and shout outs and other things I can't think of right now. So click below and check it out. Um, there's different tiers for you to be able to support the ministry that I'm doing online and in person. So yeah, check it out and let's get into Colossians 4, 2 through 6. So continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open up open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time, and let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Oh, I had a little note on here already. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to real quick give you the six tips, and then we're going to get into where we find these in Scripture. So one, it's going to be steadfast in prayer. So you're living a life that is prayer constantly. Number two is going to be ask for opportunities, or I'm going to say ask for open doors to you know, share the gospel. Three is going to be speak clearly. I think this is one that young people, and especially like this is who I used to be too, um, have a hard time just like clearly sharing the gospel. Number four is going to be walk in wisdom. Believe it or not, it is not always the best time to share the gospel. Believe it or not. Uh, number five is going to be speak graciously. We're going to talk about how the gospel is already offensive and we don't need to add to that offense, right? We need to be gracious whenever sharing it with people. And the last is going to be know what you're talking about. I think this might be, well, everybody struggles with one of these at some point, maybe all of them. Um, but this is a really big one because the last thing you want to do is share the gospel wrong. <laughs> I remember one time somebody asked me, this is like when I worked at Pizza Hut, I was like 15 or 16. She was like, so like, why are you a Christian? Or like, what's so great about being a Christian? I was just like, you know, like we just don't smoke and we just don't drink. We're just good people. That's literally how I answered her. I did not know how to share the gospel. I might not have known the gospel for myself at that time. I'm still trying to like go back on my memories and see if I was even saved. But either way, like I did not know what I was talking about. I did not have number six. So we're going to get into that. All right. So in the beginning, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful within Thanksgiving. We're actually going to start right here. Okay. So this is Paul. He says, at the same time, so while you're being steadfast in prayer, pray for us. Who is us? This is Paul who is in prison, and he probably has a scribe with him, or I think he mentioned having Timothy with him in chapter one, but I don't fully remember. So double check me on that. Um, but he is in prison, and he is um, writing to the church in Colossae. He actually didn't even plant this church. He shared the gospel with a man who went back to his hometown, shared the gospel with others. It spread like wildfire and a church grew up and he kind of like planted, created that church. And so Paul the apostle is hearing that they love Jesus and they're doing well, but there's some like false teaching about false weird things about Jesus that aren't true um, that are trying to creep into the church. So that's why he's writing this letter. 
Um, he says, so pray for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of, of Christ. So the word in declaring the mystery of Christ. He says, on account, which means because of this, I am in prison. So Paul the Apostle's number one goal in life um, is the mystery of Christ. What does that mean, the mystery of Christ? It's the gospel. It is the gospel. And my first question to you is, is the gospel your life mission? I'm going to write that here. Is the gospel your life mission? Um, that doesn't mean you can't have side missions. I want to be married. I want to have kids. I want to have a good job. I want to sell things on Etsy. I want to be a great pianist. I want to rock out stages or I want to whatever. Fill in the blank with your passions and your hobbies and these things. Those are great. But is the gospel mission your life mission is all of those things going to be what you use in life to point people to christ and to point people to the gospel do you want to be a mom so you can love children well and raise them up in the lord and share the gospel do you want a husband so that you can be a teen that goes out into the world and shares the gospel in any way, shape, or form, whether that be the workforce, whether that be missionaries, whether that be planting churches or helping in your churches or teaching Bible studies or whatever it may be, is the gospel mission your life mission? Again and again, we see this in the New Testament. He is saying, pray that God will open up a door for us. So here's the thing. Let's go back to the beginning. Now that we've laid the foundation, the gospel needs to be your life mission. No matter the cost. Look, right here he says, I am in prison because of the gospel. So no matter the cost. Oop, no matter the cost. What does it cost you to share the gospel? I remember being afraid to share the gospel at a perfect opportunity with a stranger. It was a perfect opportunity. They were like sharing their sorrows with me. And I was afraid they were going to think I was weird. There was actually no relational cost there because I would probably never see that person again. And I didn't do it because I was afraid of what people would think of me. And maybe you're afraid that family members won't want to share Christmas with you anywhere anymore. There is real cost to the gospel. Maybe you're afraid that your boss won't give you the promotion if he knows you're a Christian. Or maybe you're afraid that your friends won't think you're cool anymore. Or people won't want to hang out. Or whatever it is that you're afraid of. Whatever it is that's your cost. Paul the Apostle was willing to go to prison multiple times for the gospel's sake. And so like in America where it's easy and people aren't super hostile, what are you giving up? What are you giving up every day? Is it maybe it's your time? Because it would take time to meet with somebody. Hey, let's grab coffee. Hey, let's read this book together. Hey, let's... What's your cost? Just think about that. Answer it for yourself. Do you wake up every day and say no matter the cost? So that's between you and the Lord. So first, remember we said right here, we said number one, steadfast in prayer has to be a characterization of your life. Continue steadfastly in prayer. What does that mean, steadfastly? So... Steadfast means all the time. It means no matter the circumstance. No matter circumstance. Circumstance. Um, don't just pray when you need something or don't just pray when you're sad, but pray for everything. You're leaving the house. Lord, help me to make it safely where I'm going. Or like this prayer right here, God, may you open up doors for your word to be proclaimed. God, I'm, I'm going to be on college campus today. I'm going to be out um, taking my classes. Please give me an opportunity to build a friendship or to speak with somebody or to invite somebody to church. And God will open these opportunities. You need to steadfastly be in prayer. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter your feelings. A lot of times we pray when we feel like it. And we're like, you know, I just don't feel like praying today. I have, I'm so busy. I have other things to do. That's not steadfast in prayer. That's circumstantial in prayer. But every day we need to, whether it just be like when we're in the car, when we're making our coffee, or just whenever we're thinking on the Lord, it doesn't have to be sitting down for 30 minutes of prayer every day or you're not a good Christian. That's not what this is about. But it says continue. This right here, first off, assumes that the believer is already praying because you can't continue something you haven't started, right? So Paul is assuming that these believers are praying people. And he says, continue in it. This is a command 
This is not an option. This is an active verb. Well, not, it's not a verb. I guess it is a verb. It's active. Either way, it's an active command, and it's something that you are told to do and to pursue. Prayer doesn't happen to you. We make time to pray steadfastly, not based on feelings. All right. So, one, remember, Christians are praying people. Be watchful in it with thanksgiving. We're coming to the Lord with our thanksgiving, and, and we're, we're noticing the world around us and the opportunities God's giving us. And we are just, this is like right here, this is just communing with God. Whenever you are um, praying, you're talking to the Lord, you're being thankful for life, you are communing with God, and this is how you build your personal relationship. So if you want a life that's characterized as missionally focused or gospel focused, you need to be a praying person. All right, so moving on. Second is ask for open doors. We kind of went over this, but right here, Paul the Apostle says, can you please pray to God that he will open doors for me? Paul could have just prayed to God himself. He probably prays all the time, God, open the doors. He's in the prison and he wants opportunities to speak with the guards is really what he's talking about. Or maybe to speak with whoever is going to be judging him or however their court system worked or however they were meeting with people around him. Maybe it's other people in the prison cells. He could just pray for it himself. Why does he ask the church at Colossae to pray for it for him? Because he knows that there's strength in numbers and many people coming on behalf of the Lord and pouring out their heart and asking for opportunity and asking for favor. And he knows that it's just better when we pray together, when the people of God come before the Lord together. Um, that I may make it clear. So first, steadfast in prayer. Second, we're asking for open doors. And the third was that we're speaking clearly. Again, I'm breezing through this one because it's four verses and I just want to like get to the point, go through clearly. I'm not going to like take out every little inch that I can find in here. He says that I can make it clear which is how I ought to speak. So when you're sharing the gospel, you need to be speaking clearly. You need to know what you're talking about. Um, you don't want it, not that you need to be perfect, but you, you don't want to be fumbling around like, oh, well, maybe God and like afraid to say the hard things. Like, I mean, yeah, Jesus loves you, but you have to repent too. Wait, what'd you say? What? Well, I mean, you have to repent of your sin too. Like, mm. like, we have to share the whole gospel. Don't be afraid. Make it clear. Hey, God created you and you are accountable to him, but you are not living for him. You're living for self. You're living in sin. You are living against the God that created you. But the beautiful thing is, although your sin deserves justice against a holy God, God says that all you have to do is repent and turn to him and you will, you will be a part of his family. You will become a child of God. All your sins will be forgiven and there's peace and there's joy and there's so many avenues to share the gospel, whether it is they're sad about suffering or whether it is they think that they're great and don't need anybody. You approach it from different ways, but whichever way it may be, we have to make it clear. All of it. The hard parts like sin and justice in the easy parts, like God loves you and wants to forgive you of sin and wants to pull you into his family. Because this is how we ought to speak. We ought to know to make the gospel clear. All right, so moving on. We also need to be walking in wisdom. He says that you would walk in wisdom towards outsiders. Who are outsiders? Well, unbelievers. Obviously, who do we share the gospel with? We share it with unbelievers. Now, sometimes we share the gospel with believers because we need to remind them of who they are in Christ, of where they've come from, of what their promise and their hope is for eternity, of who their father is, of who their savior is. But this particularly is talking about sharing the gospel with unbelievers. Walk in wisdom. Well, what does that mean to walk in wisdom? Believe it or not, make the best use of your time. Not, ooh, let me do it with a different color. Not all time is a good time to share the gospel. What? That's crazy. I heard share the gospel all the time no matter what. Well, long story short, there's time in scripture where Paul the Apostle could have gone to the city and he was on the way to the city and, and, and the angel of the Lord or the pre-incarnate Christ is like, no, turn around, go over here. I don't want you to go there. My, I don't want you to share it with them at this time and 
point in time. And that's just like a little snippet of what you see in scripture, but also just, it's not always a good time because think of it like this. What if you know in this moment, this person is so overwhelmed with anger that if you share it, it's just gonna fall on deaf ears. If you're sharing it at the Christmas table when everyone's trying to have a lovely time and, and all of a sudden you're just like pointing out your, your uncle's sin and you're just like, you're always this and you're always this and you're always, God, you need to repent. Like, this would be a horrible time to do it. Like, feel your times and places. Let's say this, times and places. Ask the Lord for good open doors. Don't come knocking open doors that aren't supposed to be open at that moment. Feel it out. Or like, what if you're meeting with people to be discipled and they just never come with their book done, they never read the chapter, they never ask questions, like they don't really care. You're probably wasting your time with this person. Obviously share the gospel, try to put in a little work, but scripture talks about dusting off our feet and moving on to the next city when there's people who don't wanna hear and don't care. And then obviously if they start to show care, come back to them, that's a beautiful thing. But don't waste your time maybe with people who just, you've tried and you've tried and they just, keep throwing up a wall. Or maybe your argument means well, but it's just not going anywhere online. You're just going back and forth, going back and forth. And online may not always be the best situation for you to do it, especially in a public place, not even in like a DM or an, an email or something. Online sometimes just leads to a bunch of gibberish and blah and craziness and people aren't paying attention. Um, arguing theology unnecessarily things like this. You just need to pray about it and you just need to walk in wisdom. And this might be, you know, where you sit down with your disciple or somebody who's discipling you with your pastor, whomever, and just say, hey, this situation is happening. Like, do you think I should continue this? Or do you think this is, as scripture says, casting our pearls before swine? Because um, we need to walk in wisdom with outsiders, making the best use of our time because every minute counts when we're sharing the gospel. And then lastly, oh, there's two more, just kidding. So we have speak graciously. So moving on, if you want to live a missionally focused life, you need to let your speech always be gracious. Why? Well, one, just because Jesus is gracious, right? And we, we, we need to be. Being gracious doesn't mean you don't tell the hard truths. It just means you tell it with honey on your lips, right? Because think of it like this, the gospel is medicine. You're telling a dying world that they are dying and they need a savior and they need to put away everything they've ever loved or ever known that is against that savior. That's hard medicine to swallow. That, that medicine don't taste good, okay? So if you're coming in and you're just dousing vinegar all over them, there people are just gonna be like, oh, this is horrible. And you're, you need to come in with honey. You need to come in with graciousness. You need to come in with love. You need to come in with kindness. And love doesn't mean only say Jesus loves you. Well, Jesus loves you, just live for Jesus. It would actually be unloving to not tell them why they need Christ about their sin and about their life choices and about them just completely dismissing the God of the universe. It would be unloving not to say that, um, but just how we share how we share a hard medicine it needs to be gracious. So maybe check yourself. Like if you've been sharing the gospel like a crazy person, maybe you need to go back to those people, graciously ask for forgiveness and say, I, I've been so passionate about it. I'm letting my zeal get ahead of me, okay? And I am zealous for the Lord, but I haven't been gracious to you, I haven't been kind. And that right there will show them the true heart of Christ. Um, you're a person who is able to admit when you're wrong and that you're not perfect and you need Jesus and you fail all the time, but Christ is sufficient for your shortcomings. That would be a great testimony to go to somebody, an unbeliever, this outsider that you've harmed with your words and repent. To and repent to the Lord for sinning. Season with salt. Okay, I gotta go quick. What does salt do? Salt preserves things, salt flavors food. Salt was like a hot commodity. So you have to think about the cultural context of which they're talking, okay? Salt is important to life. It preserves their meats, it flavors their food, it it sets apart what's happening on so it doesn't their food doesn't spoil, their food tastes good, all of these things. So it's like be seasoned with salt. 
in that sense. The same way that it's like, um, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. This is what that's talking about. And then lastly, know what you're talking about so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So there's actually a way to do it. I ought to share the gospel a certain way. Well, yeah, know what the gospel is. Know the gospel. Um, I always tell this story, but like five, six years ago, me and my husband used to drive around the car. Like we weren't married at the time. We're just dating. And we used to like role play and practice the gospel. So he'd be like, okay, I'm the unbeliever. You go share the gospel. And then he would give me like, an unbeliever might say this, or they might say this, and they might say this, and then I would go and he would practice sharing the gospel. So it's just like, know what the gospel is. Make sure you have it all down, all the points of truth, all the points of love, all of the hard medicine, and then how to deliver it. It's hard, like an army prepares before they go into battle. They don't just gather up army people and throw them out there and say, all right, now go. Um, no, they train them for the battle. So prepare your mind, know the gospel, know how you ought to answer. So this, this implies a question. What if people are asking you questions about who God is in the Bible? You don't have to be perfect, but you need to know the basic fundamentals of the Christian gospel. Um, so pursue that. I love you guys. Be steadfast in prayer. Ask for open doors. Speak clearly. Walk in wisdom. Speak graciously and know what it is you're talking about. If you have any questions, DM me. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. I hope this was helpful. I was trying to get it done quick for you guys this time. I know it's been like 45 minutes so all the other times, but I love you. And yeah, I hope that you'll stick around for week 10. Click the link below, check out my Patreon, and please continue to live a missionally focused life.